What I wanted to go over quickly is applying the thermal compound on the Ryzen chips. Um, so I'll just pull this off now. There's like a traditional method of doing it, which is the old pea sized blob idea. I don't like that. I've never particularly been a fan of it, but more so now with the Ryzen processors. Um, it's there's a different way of doing it that gives you like an even spread across the CPU much like what you'd get with the pre-applied factory uh, thermal compound. Um, the reason why it's important is because with the Ryzen chips and the chiplets is what they're calling it is you've got two chip dies inside there and then an interconnect chip which uh, links them together so the whole pea sized blob thing came from back in the day where you had a central chip and so putting the pea sized blob in the center and then squashing it down uh, you will miss some of the edges there and just basic science thermal transfer is all about surface area so the more surface area that you have contacting the heat dissipator the the more thermal <coughs> transfer you'll get through it so if you put a pea-sized blob there squash it down you'd miss some of those edges and <clears throat> as a result you uh, you end up losing some thermal conductivity so with CPU lapping and that it's all about shaving down the heat spreader uh, so that you have the thinnest amount of material uh, for the heat to transfer and travel through but also if you're even if you're cooling the edge of this uh, CPU spreader um, and it's contacting the block correctly then you're gonna make the whole IHS cooler um, the whole heat spreader cooler and then its ability to take temperature away from the processor is is gonna be greater so the way that I do it is I put a line of uh, thermal compound so I'm using this it's good as good as any really um, I'll just do a line across it and then spread it flat with a credit card but you'll see what happens when you do this is it'll end up running out before you get all the way across the block so there's a thing to do when that happens you can see the length of the integrated heat spreader there. So you want to run a line, at least the length of that or just more uh, along the edge. So just a line of uh, compound like that. And then if you use a credit card, you can just keep spreading it flat until you get like as thin a layer as possible yeah which is wider than the CPU heat spreader you don't have to be super neat with it but what's important is that you get a thin even layer if it runs out at the edge you can just drag it back the other way but what you end up with see is that there is a layer of thermal compound that's larger than the heat spreader so when this goes down I'm gonna have even contact across the entire IHS and that's going to give you the best uh, cooling performance possible so it's as thin as possible yeah because the thermal compound is not as good at transferring heat through it as the copper heat block or the metal IHS which is why people use that liquid metal thermal grizzly because the metal is just better. The speed at which the heat can travel through the metal is faster. And so you, by keeping it as thin as possible, um, you're going to maximize your performance there. But then also, um, by making sure that you're contacting the entire IHS, you're cooling this as much as possible using the heat block. And again, like I said, that's particularly important with the Ryzen chips now, 
or triplet designs where you have multiple cores that aren't necessarily central and even with a central core the fact that you're giving this the maximum cooling you're just pulling more heat away from the chip so it's going to improve your thermal um, and give you more uniform cooling across the cores and stuff like that at least it has done for me in the past so this is the way that i do it um, and then the other thing is if you do it like this okay you've got a bit of a messy edge here but whenever you pull off a cpu socket and it's filled with a thermal compound and then you've got to mess around and try and clean it up this is just going to leave it very clean on top of that and so when it comes to replacing it or cleaning it up it's just much tidier to work like this so and it's easy to clean the block because you don't have to worry about it falling into the cpu socket and crap like that so this is the way to do it in my honest opinion and really if you want more aggressive performance than this then you start making you start getting inventive with the cooling so you know you're looking at sub sub ambient temperature cooling for running 27 24 7 there's a way to do that without the condensation becoming a problem but uh, that's the only way you're going to get better than this really I mean you can lap the CPU and that but those are marginal gains I mean I guess this is marginal gains but it's just the way to do it properly and then obviously you don't want to tighten one side down uh, all the way just do them evenly so it goes down flat and you're not torquing the board in one direction or the other and obviously this is spring loaded so you just turn it to the end of the travel it doesn't the spring is going to keep it tight anyway so you don't there's no point putting more pressure on there you need to just turn it down till it stops gently and that's all, all you have to do.